going to be doing data visualization from Mplus DB and integrating specifically with Plotly JS. Uh, also, my name is Zoe Steinkamp, and I'm the developer advocate in Plus DB. So, really quick, the main components of a time series application are going to be ingestion, analyzation, and app. So with that, it's ingesting the data, bringing it into the database. From there, it's going to be analyzing on it, whether that be queries or manipulations, and then finally acting, which with this one, it's more like alerting, letting you know that something has happened in real time. So InfluxDB also has three things that make it a really great time series database. It's going to be our powerful API and tool set for real-time apps, our high-performance time series engine for real-time workloads, and finally, our massive community and ecosystem, including our cloud and open source developers. One thing I do want to mention is Telegraph, which is our open source agent for collecting metrics. It's a fully open source metric collector, and it's driven mainly by our community of contributors. And I'm going to be using it inside of this little project. So really quick, just to clarify with this project, it's really just to show how easy it is to get InfluxDB working in a JavaScript project. This is relatively straightforward and simple. So specifically right here, this is the Telegraph uh, plugin for what's called System, which is basically just your computer. For this, I'm going to be querying data from Telegraph with my computer. If you already have it installed and running, it's pretty easy to do. You can also do it through the Cloud UI. Uh, I'm using this example because the data is relatively straightforward and it's actually what a lot of our devs internally use for testing. Once you do that, you can get started on Cloud with our Node.js uh, our client library. So with this, it's specifically all set up for a client for a JavaScript environment. With this one, it's pretty straightforward. You basically tell it what bucket that you are storing your data in and the token that you wish to use. Tokens can either be all access or read slash write, depending on the permissions you'd like to have. From there, it actually gives you a lot of the code that I'm about to show. It just tells you how to write it all out. It makes it very straightforward and easy. Specifically, you're just going to run these three install commands. This is going to build your Node app, install the InfluxDB client, and finally just install Express to do fetch and such. This is what I would expect the pack package.json file to look like for this. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward application. Just to clarify, this is all also on a GitHub uh, repository for you to access after this is over with. In our app.js file, this is some of that code I was talking about that we feed you. But basically here, as you can see, we're just setting up uh, our bucket, our token, our org, our overall client. This is just basically setting us up with both Express and with InfluxDB. But with all these lines of code, everything's pretty much been installed. You've already run your npm command, and you're good to go. Oh, one thing to really quick note here. In here, you can see that my org and my token are both uh, just variables. That's because they're stored in a separate file, so they're more secure. You don't really want to start pushing up your tokens to GitHub. That would be an ideal. Uh, so this is just a continuation on that file. So specifically here, what I'm doing is I am querying with Flux. The constant query is our internal scripting language called Flux. What I'm doing here is I'm basically saying, hey, give me the data from the last five minutes, which is the range, and then filter down through there. Uh, with that, basically what I'm starting to do is I'm just starting to break down some of the data that I've got coming in here. Uh, one thing to also note is that it's normally much more efficient to filter with a Flux query than to try and filter out data in JavaScript. It's just going to be more efficient if you do it first with Flux. And specifically what I do want to highlight is that I didn't build this in Flux, per se. Like, I didn't write the Flux code. What I did was I went to Cloud, and I went to our query builder, and it's very interactive. It's, you know, it's a GUI for all intents and purposes. It's a GUI to make life easier. You click on the script editor button over here, and it will create that Flux code that I just showed. So even if you don't feel comfortable learning Flux, or maybe you just don't want to, we specifically offer this to make it easy for you to use and easy to build Flux queries without having to know it by heart. Finally, I'm just going to be using a fetch function. This is when we actually start to uh, have Plotly.js built in here. Now, obviously, Plotly.js is just one open source graphing library. We also have uh, blogs as well coming out for Chart.js and D3. We're pretty compatible with most things. We're relatively agnostic as far as the platform goes. Uh, so here I have two fetch functions that call for two specific data sources with two separate flux queries. We just go ahead and unpack the data, and specifically we're uh, putting the time and value to be the x and y lines when they're graphed in Plotly. So finally we just return that trace data back once we've received everything. 
One thing to note about that, we do have that fetch data function inside of a promise. That's just to make sure that this runs appropriately. As any JavaScript engineer will tell you, if you're not careful and you don't put in promises, you end up with very nasty results. So just keep in mind that you do need a promise here to just say, hey, once all the data is here, then please go and graph it. Please don't just try and graph it in the first five seconds. And finally, this is all the code that we need for Plotly. It's really straightforward. It's really quite simple. We just have our first trace and our second trace. Uh, we have a title, and then we just tell it what kind of graph we want. And again, the HTML file, pretty much all we're doing here is that graph container is being, if you didn't notice here, it's just being popped in as graph container. And then in here specifically, we're importing Plotly. You could import Plotly, by the way, in your package.json file. You don't have to do it like this. I just decided to make it straightforward. I would just import it here. And this is the resulting graph that you would have. So you have your CPO to CPU total usage and then total usage for your exact user. And as you can see, they're slightly different. And this is over the time scale. Again, uh, this is the GitHub repo and blog. And we are also here at the Expo Hall, the Influx DB booth. If you have any questions or if you have any problems trying to find this, please let me know and I can help you out to it. But yeah, we have a blog and we have our GitHub repo. These are also further resources. This is our getting started. That's going to be the cloud platform that I was using for a good chunk of the demo. Our forms, our Slack, our GitHub community. We have a book that goes more in detail on some of the core concepts. Docs, which are obviously going to be more for technical, you know, developers and such. Blogs where we do our use cases. And finally, our Influx DB University, which is where we have our uh, brand new free learning platform. But yeah, that'll be it. Thank <laughs> you.